All right, welcome back. This is our first conversation for this morning. It's quite an interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, uh, spearheading conservation with a uh, bonefish and tarpon trust and we have joining us miss kelly ralston and she's the vp of conservation and public policy over at the trust good morning miss ralston good, good morning thank you so much for uh, having me it's a pleasure to yes. have you uh, we want to jump right into the conversation to talk a bit about the trust mm -hmm. and what it is uh, that you guys do. Yeah, so we um, actually, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust was established about 25 years ago wow. to look at bonefish declines in the Florida Keys. Um, given kind of the con connectivity of the species um, around the Caribbean, we also have um, international programs in the Bahamas and Belize and Mexico as well. Mm -hmm. So in addition to looking at bonefish, our mission expanded to the other three important flats fishing species, which are tarpon and permit as well. Mm -hmm. So we do have historically done science work, um, looking at like migration patterns, looking for areas where they go spawn, important life cycle uh, components. Mm -hmm. And then we can really kind of work with um, the community or regulations to help address and make sure that we have those sustainable fisheries based on what we're finding. In Belize, do you find that people are overfishing these particular species? So the great th thing about Belize is that bonefish, tarpon, and permit are catch and release only in yeah. the country. So that is a really important um, distinction. Um, and it's important because of the importance of those fisheries to the Belizean economy. Yeah. Um, there was a recent economic study done um, for the Turniff uh, Atoll Trust that indicated that um, the flats, fisher flats fisheries bring um, $240 million dollars of, in Belizean dollars um, to, um, to your economy. So, it, so it's really, um, not only is it important culturally, but it's an important economic driver um, and for tourism as well. What is it about uh, bonefish and tarpon that uh, is so desirable for mm -hmm. flat fishers? It's really a sporting issue, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so they're, um, they're fun to catch. You have to have skill to find them. You mm -hmm. have to have skill to catch them. And mm -hmm. so it is a real challenge. Um, in fact, I would say uh, permit on fly is probably like the pinnacle is of it? a fishing yeah. experience because of difficulty um, in actually achieving that. And so Belize is one of the few places that you can actually come and get what they call a grand slam, which is bonefish tarpon and permit, all in all one location, way. which makes it so special and so important to wow. our the organization. The only experience I've ever had with tarpons <laughs> is, uh, you've been to Key Cocker, right? Mm -hmm. Where yeah, you, you feed them, you feed them all, <laughs> and that's the only experience, and I think I want to keep it Yes, they, they can be very <laughs> aggressive in those types of environments, um, but they are just such an impressive fish to watch. Um, it's just awe-inspiring to see how they move, how beautiful they are, and then when they jump, it's just it's, it's glorious. Incredible. So yes. if they're if they're already protected uh, here in Belize, mm -hmm. what uh, what why add to that uh, mm -hmm. conservation work? Yeah, so what we're doing actually is um, the commitment that we're making in the country of Belize, which we're excited to announce here today, um, is for a million dollars US over the next three years to continue to address um, science needs, basic science needs that we have for these species, as well as education and outreach opportunities for folks to understand the importance of not only conserving those three species, but also the habitats and waters that support them. Mm -hmm. um, because it is such a, a key part of, of um, you know, of the social uh, strata here in, in Belize. Do th are they um, in particular habitual lo locations in and around the country and are there communities and people that interact with them regularly? Oh, absolutely. I would say um, the guiding community in particular, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is a major economic driver mm -hmm. and those flats fisheries um, are, are iconic for, for folks to come and, and enjoy Belize. Mm -hmm. um, and just to give you a little idea of what we mean by flats fishery. Yeah, so um, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, where you can go catch these fish are on really shallow areas that um, have seagrasses typically mm -hmm. where you're out there but they also need additional habitat for the other life phases that they have so um, when fish are little they're typically inshore in the mangrove so they need that kind of structure to grow and be protected and then they'll move on to the flats and then for spawning where they're actually going to reproduce a lot of them will use the the reefs right they like mm -hmm. the deep areas um, offshore so we talk about flats as the the shallow areas but it really encompasses a lot more than that but for 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 the most part will they spend most of their life in the shallows well of their adult life their yes adult life. and then when they go to spawn that's typically a separate the, okay. event that they go do for a specific time and then come back and then here mm -hmm. in belize you would find them in abundance uh, in the flats. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. So, so when, let's... Oh, okay. sorry. When it comes to the, the funds, <laughs> yes, <that's laughs> because right. now we have a million dollars to work with. Mm -hmm. um, what are the objectives mm -hmm. of the trust when it comes to disbursement of these funds mm -hmm. and how is it going to benefit the communities? Yeah, so um, we talked a little bit about the education and outreach component for folks to understand mm -hmm. the importance of these species and, and how they can do their part to help conserve them. Um, we talked about um, potentially or scientific research that's been ongoing. We've actually been operational in Belize um, for 18 of those 25 years wow. that BTT has been in existence. So just to kind of highlight how important um, Belize is. And then also looking at capacity building, um, not only within um, Belizean NGOs, but also looking um, at MPA co-management support and for Belizean agencies as well that would be, um, you know, fall, fall under the sport fishing. Is, is there a um, particular time period that this project is going to be pushed? Yeah, this will be over the next three years. Okay. Um, so we're looking, um, you know, at significant ongoing investments here and look, to, you know, to potentially grow it in the future because the region in particular of the Yucatan is just such, such a key part of, um, of sustainable fisheries. Is the trust partnering with um, other entities here in Belize to push this project, uh, universities? Yeah, so NGOs. we have done NGOs. adjunct work with universities, particularly on the science phase of things, mm -hmm. um, Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute. Right. The reason we're here this week is because it's Coastal Awareness Week. Yes, yeah. highlight yeah. our yeah. natural resources. <laughs> so it just seemed to be a really appropriate time to, to make this announcement. Um, so we've been working with them, particularly on summer camp um, mm -hmm. support. Um, but yeah, so there's a flat, uh, guides groups and that sort of thing that we can help offer support mm -hmm. to. So. What, what is it that uh, we want uh, our communities to learn mm -hmm. or become more aware of mm -hmm. about uh, flats, fishery and bonefish uh, and these types of fish? I think one, that they are important culturally and economically. Mm -hmm. I think two, that when we talk about flats fishery, it's much more than just the flats. Mm -hmm. um, that all of our fisheries really depend, to be sustainable, depend on not only healthy habitats, but healthy waters to go with that. And so when you look at things like over the water developments, yes, does that make correct. sense and that sort of thing. And so making sure that we are doing sustainable, responsible development that balances those economic drivers and needs of the country with sustainable resources. How, how will these conversations perhaps drive uh, policy changes? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it uh, perhaps to inspire and encourage communities to seek or demand uh, that policies are in line with uh, conservation efforts? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, just having the information that we can help provide um, in addition to potential policy support can help move that narrative forward. And so knowing the importance of the fisheries, knowing where the fisheries operate, mm -hmm. knowing um, how many jobs depend on them. They're estimating 4,500 full-time jobs wow. within the country are dependent on the flats fishery. Mm. Um, so it's a significant component. And so just making sure that we, like I said, are balancing the development um, needs and requirements for to continue to grow economically with um, with our sustainable What fishery. we're seeing on the screen there, mm. what we saw oh, yes. moments ago. Oh, yeah, one of the ago, summer camps. Yeah. That, that, I think this is the uh, Willboro Flats. Oh, yes. Yeah. That That's the Willboro, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. This is where uh, the Placencia community yes. who's mm -hmm very invested yes, in they were. Uh, flats fishing. Yes, mm -hmm. they, were. Um, they sort of stood up and uh, made their voices heard mm -hmm. about uh, the importance yes. of uh, these flats uh, to their economy, mm -hmm. um, to their livelihoods, yes. and uh, to the environment in terms of the habitat of bonefish and tarpons. Mm -hmm. uh, What's your thoughts when you look at things like that happening, communities coming together to say, hey, this is worth protecting? I think it's so encouraging. And I think that process actually was, um, was an encouraging thing that happened to bring that community together, to bring the guides together in particular, and that they felt like they had a voice um, and that there was a response, right? An it appropriate was, response, yeah. which was just lovely to kind of see those two things come together. Does that encourage you? It does, because then you actually see that people care, that yeah. they, they have that connection to, to the natural resources around them. And that's really what it's all about. Um, in the 18 years that you have been operating mm -hmm. in Belize, uh, what do you believe the progress is when it comes to the communities that are engaging with you and the environment? 
I think one, that they continue to engage, right? We mm -hmm. actually have a lot of assistance um, from the guiding community in doing our research. We can't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so to have that, um, that partnership has been really key. Um, and then as part of that, then you can help educate them on the science that you're working on, why you're doing the science, why the science can then help drive the policy and kind of wrap it all up so that they have a really strong understanding and appreciation. Have you been speaking with the uh, Ministry of Sustainable Development and Climate Change when it comes to this, or the Department we, of Fisheries? Yeah. Yes, we have been um, corresponding with them mm -hmm. um, over some of the development concerns, particularly, and just making sure that we're doing things responsibly yeah. um, that really is taking into account um, the long-term long viability. <laughs> <'Cause Yeah. Well, laughs> we don't want to be short-sighted, right? Yeah. We want to have that long-term goal, and you can't you can do both. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just wanted to find out a bit more about how the funds will be managed mm -hmm. and how will the decisions uh, be taken as to what initiatives or efforts uh, these funds go towards. Yeah, the funds will, will go through BTT and be granted out. So um, individual organizations will be happy to work with to develop a um, memorandum of, of understanding mm -hmm. if, if the missions align um, and work in that sense. So, um, so in terms of access to the funds, uh, is it uh, solely uh, a situation where BTT identifies yes. its initiatives and not necessarily where NGOs come and say, hey, uh, can we apply yeah. for yes. a portion of it? Yes. So the, yes and the, yes. The former, not the latter. <laughs> okay, so yes. it's a former. I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, so it's a former. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yes. So, and you've already identified the well, we have, yeah, so we have, um, we have a, a long-term science plan for research that we're doing and as well as a policy plan. Um, and we're working on our strategy, particularly on the, um, the capacity building um, component of that. So I think if there are things that, um, you know, that line up with, mm -hmm. those, with the sport fishing, flats fishery side of things, that um, we'd certainly be open to working with a number of folks. What's the end goal here? Mm. Uh, sustainable fisheries in Belize, um, beautiful natural resources, not only for the, the bonefish tarpon and the permit, but like I said, everything around them because it is all connected. And so what happens even upstream yeah. um, comes down into the estuaries and, and can impact all the way off to the coral reefs. So yeah. it's wow. really important. I, yeah, and I and that's why I was, when you first came in, I wanted to know about um, how this is going to help with overfishing and mm -hmm. so forth because we do have a problem here in Belize when it comes to that, even though it is the livelihood of some of these communities. Yeah. So this is to practice sustainable fishing habits, restoration, mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, when you say responsible fishing and fishing habits, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so particularly on these species, on the Grand Slam species mm -hmm. that are catch and release only, a lot of that has to do with handling techniques. And so mm -hmm. making sure you're not keeping fish out of the water. Uh, there's a tagline called keep them wet, right? We mm -hmm. want to make sure that we're not only um, preserving their physical um, um, form, so not injuring jaws and that sort of thing when we're removing hooks, but also making sure that we're keeping them wet because long term, that is much better for the fish. Mm. Um, it also helps reduce shark depredation. Um, so when sharks come and they eat the thing that you're trying to put back in the water, um, you know, those obviously have a long-term impact or can have a long-term impact on the fishery itself. So there's a lot to it. And then understanding the connection between water and habitat and fish. So there's, it's kind of a, um, you know, a fish to environment scale there. I, I wonder, oh. I wonder, given the economic uh, impact mm -hmm. that uh, this industry has locally, how much of those revenues are actually being pumped back mm -hmm. into conservation efforts? I mean, your efforts over at BTT is commendable, mm -hmm. but how much of uh, those millions mm -hmm are actually being pumped back into conservation. Yeah, so my understanding, at least for sport fishing, there is a separate license that is required, and those funds do go back into, into. coastal zone um, management um, authority. So, so in that sense, they are, and that's typical of most license purchase structures, right, that they go yeah. di directly back into the agency. Um, but as far as how many, how much of that could be diverted for habitat restoration, I'm not sure of the mechanism there. That'd be that'd be an interesting path to explore. I think. It would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As we wrap up this conversation, um, Ms. Ralston, I just wanted to give you your your moment to say a few words to your people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We need to thank and um, what we can expect in the next three years of the uh, BTT's um, one million uh, USD for flats fishery yeah. conservation. Well, first, thanks thanks to y'all for the opportunity to come speak this morning. Um, it was lovely to be able to make such a wonderful announcement. 
Um, Belize, like I said, is such an iconic destination for the flats fishery. Um, it has just tremendous economic um, and social importance. And you know, using by BTT being committed to Belize um, in that quantity for the next three years, I think we're going to see some really great stuff, including policy changes that will will ensure uh, sustainable fisheries for the future. Wonderful! Yeah. Thank you so much. For My pleasure. Us Thank this you. Morning. And with that, we are going to take a quick break. And thank goodness it's courts. Yeah. When yeah. We come back. <laughs> it's a sale at courts. We have our friends already here in the studio to join us for this conversation. Don't go away. We'll be right back.